Hey everybody, welcome to episode uh, 62 of Tactical Crouch for a competitive Hearthstone podcast. I am Kick Tripod, joined of course by Yiska and Volamel. We've got a show for you. A little salute there from Yiska for those in the audio. I always do that. In the audio world. Do you really? I've yeah. never, I've never. That's a lie. That. You don't always you, do that. I don't not, think not, you've Not ever. to say hi, but definitely to, to say bye. Yeah. Check it out. I don't think I missed it one episode. I, b- I believe I believe the goodbye. I don't believe the. I believe I believe That's goodbye. True. I, I would yeah, also say yeah. that I think that you probably missed at least one episode. Maybe. maybe. Did I say maybe, professional yeah. Hearthstone podcast? I probably did. Competitive yeah. Overwatch podcast. I thought it was a. I just thought it was a a, a shtick. <laughs> it wasn't. I was just, just like, like okay, idiot. We're Hearthstone now. No, I'm just <laughs> stupid. Chill and Yeti and stuff. I know. I, just, the, I know that game. I I've just I've done so. No joke. I've done. Um, I I did. It used to do a show called Well Met. Still going, by the mm-hmm. way. If you like Hearthstone podcasts, you should check it out. But um, I I have I used to practice my intros, and I had practiced it so many times that now whenever I like I'm mic checking a new microphone mm-hmm. or. Anything else? I go, hey everybody, welcome to another episode of ta- or uh, Well Matt, we're a Hearthstone podcast brought to you by BlizzBro.com. And like, that's the thing that I say mm-hmm. to like test all- anything. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think I might have just gone on just autopilot. Happen. Happens there. Yeah. Well, I'm fired. I'm done. <laughs> that's it. Mm. Uh, we've got a pretty great show for you this week. Um, Got some patch notes for you. Should be fun. Got some news about the Houston Outlaws. Going to analyze yep. a little bit about the Overwatch League prize pool. This should uh, this is going to be some pretty cool, pretty cool info here. Big thanks to Eric for putting it together for us. And then of course, talk about the roster moves. There's lots of roster moves going on, so uh, we're going to talk about them. It's going to be good. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, before we do though, let's uh, let's let's housekeep. For a moment, uh, show is uh, largely supported by our patrons and our subs. So if you like the show, go to patreon.com slash tactical crouch or subscribe here at twitch.tv slash kick tripod. It's a great way to support the show. Help us be able to make the show look great and sound great and bring on awesome guests and be able mm-hmm. to be flexible with our timelines. And, you know, post a show on Thursday if we can get a guest on Thursday because we can. So that support means the world to us. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter at tactical underscore crouch. And then, of course, tweet us your questions and topics if you would like them discussed on the show. Uh, the show does record live at 11 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesdays. And next week, next week, we're going to have a special guest. It's going to be Sefi Brad Rajani, head coach for the uh, Atlanta Rain. You're going to be on the show next week here, twitch.tv slash kick tripod, live 11 a.m. Pacific time on Tuesday. So you're welcome. So go support the show so we can keep bringing you awesome guests like that. Uh, other than that, though, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, what happened last week. So this was posted on Wednesday. So if you're listening to it now, it might be a little bit old news, but we did get a pretty major patch for uh, Overwatch. It's on the PTR right now. Um. Highlights of the patch. So I do want to bring this up just because I think it's cool. They did add the while you Mm. wait feature. Yes. uh, Which is actually really handy because your choice is to either look at a loading screen or whatever, a waiting screen or skirmish. Mm -hmm. Whereas now you can go into the practice range with your group skirmish. You can do death match, custom games. uh, Pretty cool. I think I don't know if there's much to say about that, though. No, it, it's it's a big like quality of life thing that I think I don't I, I wouldn't say that I've I've heard a lot of people complain about, but it's definitely like a, a pleasant surprise that this is something that you can do now with how much customization that you can actually do within the workshop. Like there there are like little drills that you can do while you wait going into into ranked. And I think that's really cool. Um, it, It's a nice touch. Um. Yeah, I think it's good, a good movement overall. I, I really like this patch in general. I, I, I thoroughly enjoy um, a lot that went into this. So, yeah, big thumbs up. Good, mm-hmm. good, good week. Are any of you surprised that we didn't just see them announce this at BlizzCon? Mm, 
I think patches are probably not that. Yeah. But even like the while it's... you wait, even like anything. Yeah, maybe. Like, because we didn't get anything from patches. Like, there was an extra. Yeah. Even though I agree, is this large enough to warrant a BlizzCon announcement? Is probably no. Yeah. The fact that they were silent on any, like, balance changes and heroes is also, I think, was equally disturbing. So. I think it's a panel thing, right? Like, they could have brought it up on the panel and then put the patches out. I would also wager a guess that they weren't even done by then. Yeah. It's very possible that they sure. were still talking about it and that their mind was somewhere else. It's just a couple lines of code, guys. That's, it. <laughs> That's all it is. It's easy. Just do it faster. I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, let's, let's talk about the, the broad strokes here for this patch. Um, armor damage reduction reduced from three to five, and then quite a few heroes had their armor boosted. Mm -hmm. uh, overall, we saw uh, barriers get reduced in overall health as well across Arisa, Sigma, mm -hmm. and Reinhardt. Ryan, yeah. But we also saw them buffed in different ways, either damage output, overall health, um, speed movement. for, yeah, mm -hmm. movement yep. speed, exactly. So uh, with those kind of being the overall kind of high end or like, you know, the high end, the, the broad strokes, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, what's what's your what's your take on uh, Overwatch? A making such a drastic change in the off season, and B just the changes overall. I mean, I think we I think we'd all agree that I that the 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 big sweeping changes in the off season are, are, are very 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 much a good thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'd like this style of change coming mid season or even like during the season. I think that I'm a little bit scared that if they're going to apply a heavier hand with how much resources are going into Overwatch 2, they're, you know, to try and keep the 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 single or the original game afloat, maybe they are going to apply a different patching style. And I hope that's not necessarily the case all the time. Um I, I think we're I think you have to be careful with how with, with with kind of what you wish for in that sense because I, I don't know if I'd like this going into you know Overwatch League season three's you know playoff format at the end of the year and now we just get a bunch of barrier changes and the game's like drastically altered at you know a, a balance level and it's just like do we do we want that right before the playoffs for a third time like I don't know. Um, I, I like it in the off season. I, I really, I really think this is a good general change. Um, it's definitely listening to a lot of what the community has been griping about. Yeah, I, I generally agree. Like the the severity of the change. This also feels like we're not number tweaking as much anymore. We're actually mm -hmm. like fundamentally changing things yep. about this. You know, if you like the, I think developers really realize that this these incremental changes especially during the season. Okay, so, I mean, there's a manifold uh, reasons why the meta didn't change despite getting anti-GOAT patches. Yeah. One being that they were not severe enough, another being they're not being time, and they're definitely being a propensity towards playing what works at the time. Mm -hmm. So they became less likely. Now it's like there's an, there's nothing you're really disrupting by going ham on those changes. Yeah. Um it's also pretty much interestingly in the vein that a lot of the community it's not the very specific changes that the community wanted in terms of like the exact numbers or the exact changes, but I think the overall um direction is very much to what I read from the competitive uh community. Mm. Which I you also love think, doing, by the way. <laughs> I also think, like, it probably barely matters uh, for lower levels. Um, the, the yeah, it shouldn't, right? Changes like, in general. Shields and barriers play very different roles in, like, low yeah. ranked and high ranked. It's just. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just kind of insane. Like, on honestly, so I've been playing on one of my alt accounts with Katie, um, mm -hmm. who uh, she's brand new to PC shooters and she's doing great. And I'm so proud. But we are we are slumming it. <laughs> but but we are slumming but, it right now. I knew that was a but. Okay. And you know, like Sigma, Arisa, yeah. and Reinhardt are largely perceived as the same exact tank. Mm. Because they have shields. Get us a shield mm, yeah. tank. 
just I mm-hmm. just we need the shield to be able to stand behind. It doesn't matter if it's Arisa, mm-hmm. Reinhardt, or yep. Sigma. Like that's your job. You need to have a shield tank. That's at least mm-hmm. one. And so yeah. it's really interesting how that changes the higher that you you get up. And also, mm-hmm. what's with the edgy jerk bronze DPS Q people? Blaming everybody Welcome else. To the internet. Like, holy yeah. cow. Yeah. Yeah. All I right. mean. Anyways, yeah. that's that's probably not for a competitive Overwatch podcast. But <laughs> I'm just saying, it's totally different to, like, the normal, like, you know, Diamond Low Master where, I, you know, I sat no. at when I played a ton. I, I do think you, you kind of touch on a, a, a like an interesting point, like generally when it comes to like Overwatch and, and, and it's and it's many competitive facets, like the way that they've designed some of these tanks still does not translate well from like the top to the bottom in, in the sense that in some of your games, you will still get people complaining that Winston is not a main tank. And mm-hmm. I think that just comes from how he's designed so differently to your primary kind of anchor barrier tanks like your your sigmas even though i i disagree with blizzard that yeah. is somehow that he was going to ever fill that role even mm. before his nerfs now i think he i just don't see that ever happening um yeah i i just it, it's just so strange to me that it i think that's like the next i the i think that's the next way that they start to fiddle with the game is like okay what do we really want tanks to be? What is what does that look like? What are what are what are tank heroes? What are, what do we want them to do? What is what are their identities in the game? What do yeah. we want to do with barriers? Because we were starting to file down Overwatch as a game. Okay, we've got we've got roll queue. You know, at first we had you know infinite heroes or you know the the no hero limit nonsense. We're starting to pare down the game, and I think that's the next bastion of of kind of refinement is. What what does it really mean to be a, a an attacking hero or, or a DPS hero? What does it mean to be a support hero? Are we going to ever go back to, you know, some of these other roles like attack and defense? What did that mean? Why did why did those go away? Um, yeah, I, I think in general you, you you touch on that pretty aptly. Like things kind of have to change at some point, and hopefully it happens with Overwatch too. Uh, that's gonna be a crutch probably going forward. Even I, going into the 2020 season, it's like, well, maybe it fixes in Overwatch too. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I think the one thing that when they look at that da- data, that seems to be very, very obvious to me, and I don't know how you would interpret it any other way, mm-hmm. is that playing the role of tank is generally less fun than the other roles. Yep. Represented by the Q length. Mm-hmm. And that generally people want to shoot stuff. Do you think that's yeah. the same in um, World of Warcraft? E, mm, yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, they, they, I think they are much less uh, main tanks, right? Like you, the main tank queue is the, the shortest, despite that you only needing one, for instance, for groups or whatever. And like Gila and Trank is c- kind of the same. Because I, you, cause like, I, Sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt, mm. and I know this sure. is totally, totally a deviation, and, and I don't know, probably a bad comparison. But mm-hmm. in World of Warcraft, there's the same. You have the same role queue concept where yeah. you can queue as a tank, a DPS, or a healer, and the tank queues are by far the fastest. The long, yeah, healers are not far behind, but usually a bit slower. And then, of course, DPS is a lot longer, and you have even a wider disparity, right? Yeah. So. Uh, tanks, it, DPS, uh, healers in or supports in Overwatch are two, two, two. For like a LFR, it's like two, five, eighteen. Yeah. Um, uh, eighteen DPS, five healers, two tanks. Mm. And but the two tank queues are. That takes forever. Virtually well, instant. Y- yeah, if, if you are a tank, it's very quick. If you're, a if tank, you're waiting the for fastest. a tank, it takes forever. If you're a, if you're a DPS, it's yeah. really bad. I, I'm just curious if you feel like that that je- directly equates with fun. That's interesting. I don't I don't actually know. I think it's more of a perception thing with WoW. I yes, think people it, perceive it to be way more difficult than what it is. Yeah, I think people don't like to be pounded on. It's also mm. that people just think, think no, less granularly the more 
uh, casual there, right? So if Blizzard tells you someone is an anchor tank, then that's your box. And then if you queue tank, then you're expected to be one of the two that fills anchor tank, mm -hmm. right? Even though that's not necessarily yeah, the case, <laughs> you don't have to. Um, but it, they just, it's also like, you know, like them being, like what you said, like these three heroes are the same thing, right? They yeah. really aren't. We know that, right? No, like yeah. It's totally, really, really, yeah. really different. Very different. So um, the, the problem is you won't fix that that idea or make casual player bases think about things more granularly. You, you got to adjust your, the way you, um, you sort of message this and by s straight up saying Sigma is an anchor tank, he gets placed into that box. Now, yeah. maybe that was a PR move in order to say, okay, not only do we think he's a, uh, an anchor tank, but he's also an anchor tank that is arguably more fun than how the many, other anchor how tanks are. How mm -hmm. many players, especially in the casual player base that we're talking about, though, saw that? Do you think? I saw think much video. more. I think a good like the, amount. Let's see. I mean, those How are many? kind of like the summoning spotlights for like League of Legends. Like, yeah. if if there's a new hero comes out, you're like, oh, let me see what he does. Like, usually, I think I I would be pretty. I mean, for I'd the, be pretty surprised uh, if yeah, uh, if I, those I honestly, numbers were low. Don't know if I've seen it all the way through, so I'm just, I'm just asking. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's um, fair. And I don't think that you're you're wrong in that. I think that if if I'm being honest, at least at the lower lower tiers right now, I'm not mm -hmm. sure that there is a differentiation between a uh, anchor tank and an off tank as much as a shield tank and something else. Yeah, we need a shield tank and something Which else. I would always do use that interchangeably, but yeah. But uh, the the developer updates with Sigma, where he says that had two million views on YouTube, so that seems wow. to be significant. Especially if you then think that one thirtieth the player that. base got it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that, but that almost all the that like... framing then spreads to the no, I'm just to the NBA player base, right? Just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, <sighs> it, I mean, it's it's interesting. I I was listening to Plat Chat. And Reinforce was really worried about this homogenizing. Yeah, that's um, a very that was a very wow. The text. Like, I, 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 I couldn't find myself to to agree with it in the slightest. Mm. But I was wondering if any of you guys feel like this homogenizes the results, and if there is a world in which you cannot homogenize somewhat and still remain balanced. <laughs> I think it's so hard to homo I think it would be very difficult to homogenize this game. I think just at like a f like a fundamental like character like design level, they're so like depo like they're so different from each other. Like Ryan is very different to like Winston. So like the way that you it would be hard for me to to wrap my head around them being homogenized in a way. I mean, you could I, you could argue that like they're taking steps to try and get there but compared to a game that's completely based around spells and and class identity gets you know reworked every other expansion it feels like um yeah i don't know yeah i think it's a little bit different compared to going from like vanilla world of warcraft to like burning crusade where you know you needed a paladin tank to do certain dungeons and warriors were just so bad and this that the other thing like and now, you know, on the 15th millionth iteration of WoW, like it, everybody has every tool and, and uh, everybody can heal and everybody can do this. Like, right. I don't see Overwatch well, he used, getting to that he used point. World of Warcraft, right? He yeah. Used World it's Warcraft a very a justification, like, which, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's along those lines of if uh, it used to be in World of Warcraft, if you were a priest and your raid team needs this certain buff or this certain CC, yeah. And priests didn't bring that. It means all of a sudden you couldn't raid. Right? Mm -hmm. If you didn't bring the certain thing. And so it was it was kind of uh it, it made it too different. So then they went through a time where it's like everybody gets two CCs and everybody gets one silence and everybody gets this yep. buff. Um and it might be a choice of buffs or whatever. And they kind of went through and did that. I I just don't see like, yes, I agree that there probably is less differentiation overall between let's just use the shield tanks right now sure. with mobility being higher 
and shield health being lower, sure. But I think that's a that's a like a far cry away from any of this being homogenized and all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, Reinhardt and Reese are interchangeable. Um, mm-hmm. outside of the, mm-hmm. the, the lowest yeah. levels of, of of Overwatch. Sure. In which case, like, we already have that issue. Yeah. I mean that's going to be. Let me tell you way. something. <laughs> we already have that issue. But yeah, I, I, I don't I, I see the point. I just don't think it'll ever be as bad. If that yeah. makes sense, it, yeah. I think it, it, you'd have to like really redesign. Like a, again, like Arisa can do things while shielding. Reinhardt can't. He has a bigger shield. They're angled differently. Like, and and yeah, like some of the lower players, like some of the more casual players, don't necessarily look at it that way. But it doesn't stop it from being true, right? Right. So. And there and there is, and Blizzard has always been one to like do their best to balance for everybody almost to a fault. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then too, like uh, this might be controversial. <laughs> if, if homogenizing the heroes means mm-hmm. for more balanced games and more fun games, do you care? Hmm. Hmm. That's a that's a I'd have to think on that. As somebody who doesn't really like play ima- the game, like imagine but... all of a sudden that uh-huh. let's let's use the flat chat example here. Sure. Let's let's imagine that all of a sudden Genji has a gun. Has, has, a, has a gun, but shoots out projectiles yeah. that just look like bullets. Exactly the same movements and everything else. Shoots out it's like purely cosmetic, like it wouldn't change anything. Exactly. So that was one of the points they're making. But now imagine yeah. that Genji stays the same, but mm-hmm. um, all of his abilities change to be like Reaper. Then yeah, it'd probably be a lot boring, a lot more boring. But they would like, never, they would uh, never do that, right? You never just have no, two yeah. heroes who do the same thing, same whatever. Like there's, yeah. there's never that level. But you know, imagine you get another soul. Like I could totally see there being another soldier hero uh, in the next two years, where we get just another like straight up default fps shooter guy and then you change his right click and e and shift abilities right like i Mm -hmm. mean man is this like how different in shoot like shooting wise just left click wise are ash and mccree I mean, there's mm. definitely nuance to it. There but is, but like overall, if just someone like goes, pure if someone gun picks play Ash, mechanics. Do you go, dude, no, we need a McCree right now. Yeah, or the other way around. Yeah. Unless it's around think, their alt. Yeah. Um, I don't think any of like us are at the level where that would matter. Yeah, so yeah. I think that that's my point. If you get more Ash's McCree versus uh, Hammond's and... Uh, Reinhardt's mm. like is that a bad thing or can you still have two heroes who fill very I would say I don't want to say similar roles but can mm. often can can often fill can like be interchanged yeah if if they're filling that similar role is does that overall feel bad I don't think so I think that I think like the 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 hit scan kind of trifecta I guess you could put like widow in that that square if you want to call it that um, I think they're different enough to feel like they bring something new to the table. Um, Ash is way more vertically mobile. McCree's way more horizontally mobile, has a little bit more hard CC, worse alt, arguably. Um, yeah, I, th- I think they're they're different enough. If anything, I might like take a look at Soldier, but yeah. All know. right. Any other thoughts on this? Sorry, I didn't want to go too deep into it. No, I, 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 I like the, the talk around it. I think in general, it's, it's, a, it's a good patch. I think hopefully this is a step in the right direction that they're being a little bit more uh, bold in the way that they want to balance the game so it isn't just incremental. And, and I, I want to give Yiska credit to this. Um, you know, he kind of opened uh, my eyes to the idea that a lot of balance is a little bit more placebo in a way where you're making small incremental changes to kind of nudge players, even though like it maybe doesn't, it, it matters kind of multiplicatively almost where it's like, okay, we're going to, nice we're going to push Reaper work. slowly, 
slowly in this direction. We're gonna. It was like back when like Sombra's translocator got like its cooldown reduced by like two seconds. It's like, does that matter? Is that enough? It's gonna push yeah. people to play it and try it out and see if it feels any different. That exposure to the hero matters a lot more than the two seconds the translocator got you know shaved off. So um, the the more bold way that they're balanced in the game, I think, is generally good. So big thumbs up on my end i just hope this doesn't uh the heavy hand doesn't continue too often in the league because i can imagine that not being a great thing i, I think that's the in general it's going to be very difficult to prepare for if you know winston you know his shield gets you know gutted and he gets way more mobile and does more damage and you know, they they rework this hero. I I just can't imagine that being very fun to prepare for um, while traveling and stuff. So uh, I think <laughs> that I, I, I like it, but it also like be careful. Yeah, I get it. But now is the time, right? Like, let, let's talk about the timing for a yes, second. Yes, right we'll now. Move on. We're like in the it. middle. Teams are just starting to practice. Like, yes, is this the time to push out a major balance change? Yeah, uh, I think. OK, so. Right now, it's kind of good because now is when a lot of teams start uh, scrimming again. Yeah, I think um, Houston just talked about them, them getting back into scrims. Bunch of teams are also boot camping, even in Korea. Um, some aren't, but uh, certainly are scrimming. So this is where you probably can develop an idea of what the meta is and then still take feedback into account. Um, till the Overwatch League starts again. The only thing I'm mildly concerned about is that we have no real competition up until this point where, you know, the meta organization could happen beforehand. Now, mm. this could be, like, depending on what kind of uh, admirer of Overwatch you are and, like, what you like about Overwatch, that could be cool for you if all teams start into the year without... No, with with not having an established idea, even though I think there's a cross a, a lot of cross pollination between teams, but especially the way that um, sort of la some of those teams remain in an A, and so many of them go to Korea. Maybe we get two different cultures there, two different meta interpretations, like we see all, very often in other esports, where different regions have different approaches and different contenders region regions have different approaches, like we had with goats in Europe and whatnot. Um, that would be interesting. I still think we. it would be dope if we had like one big tournament where we could uh, like sort of apply the pressure to the teams to play the best that they could. Mm, and then we have an me. idea what the meta sort of is. And if we absolutely loathe the idea of that very meta, because mm. it's as lame as double tank, a uh, double shield, sorry. Sure. Because that is just about like double shield, Symmetra, uh, all the is about as lame as I can yeah. conceptualize a, a meta to be, then um, we could still change something about it then, maybe mid-January or something, or early January after the holidays. Otherwise, like we're just starting uh, with a healthy proven meta into the season. We kind of already know what's up, and then... Of course, people can always innovate on that idea eventually, like we even saw in GOATS, honestly, right? After the break with the Sombra GOATS and whatnot. But um, yeah, generally, uh, I'm a big fan of the timing, of the severity of the changes. I'm a big fan that it now arrives in a time when teams are starting to scrim again, where we have pugs and it's one of the coolest content um, I think that has been Overwatch streaming for a while. Yeah. And... Honestly, and it's coming yeah, from this Europe point. too, which is it's hilarious that you know that the the region that doesn't get much love, that doesn't see a ton of support, is mm -hmm. you know out there just scrounging and just working their their tails off and and mm -hmm. putting out some very cool content. You know, I I think uh, I think Team Envy's head coach Chu talked about it on Twitter not too long ago. Like, come on, NA, like, what are we what are we doing? Are we just gonna like just let them have all yeah. the fun? Are we just, yeah? So. It, 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 it's kind of interesting, a little, little side tangent there. Also, uh, not even lying, is there an argument to be made to not stream some scrims at the moment after tryouts are done, you don't have to sign any new players, everyone is announced. 
Couldn't it be like that Atlanta just scream, uh, stream some scrims against Dallas, for instance? Just yeah, for the fun of it? I wouldn't hate it. At I this moment? Be solid content. If, if you're actually going to like... Have someone like cast... Scrim practice? Like, are you, if it's actual practice and you're actually trying, then yeah, I think it'd be good. But I don't think it can be framed as a scrim and then just be a show match. Isn't like the argument the, against the that, though, is not revealing strategies? At this point, it's I think yeah, it's way I think too it's early too to... early. Yeah, I mean because you're you're not really keeping any strategies at this point. I don't think anyone is working against each other. Everyone's just like trying their best to yeah. make sense of this mess, right? Like we we it's once again sort enough, of rebooting. Yeah, say. yeah. No. I mean, I don't I... like, and again, I'm not a coach. Um, sure, but I the the coaches that I know seem to like run pretty close to the they already have the ideas formulated for the players maybe there's just kind of like whatever we're just going to jump in and and mm. like kind of try and go through this thing but I like I don't know um, I mean, I'm sure there would there to be things that they want to keep a little bit closer to their chest. Like, we the... don't necessarily want to broadcast this, but, you know, maybe we'll play May on this point or this, that, the other thing that they <sighs> don't want to show immediately. But I think in general, they, they'd still try. They still might, you know, show off some of their more interesting things because it is, you know, at the end of the day, content and it's not bad for the team. So. It is con content and content is good. I mean, and yeah. anybody <laughs> has been critical <laughs> of Overwatch League team's content on the show. It has been me, but mm. like, I just, as, as much as I hate to like, think that this is a, a, a thing, it's, I don't see a world in which, um, cause it, it's kind of a race to the meta, isn't it? Yeah. At that point sure. and broadcasting that in any sort of way, uh, can take away any <sighs> advantage that you might have had. Um, who who are you keeping it from and how does that work though like i feel like there's so much cross dissemination and, and i don't of know just like, yeah and that's the thing is i don't know the league culture and how much mm -hmm. like coaches are like working together on figuring this out and how much or little you have to show in scrims to still be like okay we figured this out we understand it um i would yeah and I, but i, I also still know think it's the, the competitive nature of most yeah, people and coaches is still like I don't care. It's risk. Yeah, Let's just I, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I understand, understand that, that fundamentally. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think some teams are much more open with that idea, much sure. more. Um, and I think ultimately, like, I would probably just get a caster maybe for a couple yeah. of games or something. Um, I'm, there's there's plenty of people out there that would love to do that and you probably don't even have to charge them they'd just be willing to do it you know on their own time for that sweet sweet exposure money um and yeah it doesn't seem like all that hard to throw together if you're open to it i mean I, again i think that was probably my biggest criticism of the preseason is that it was mandated almost that like hey you're gonna play on stage it's gonna be a scrim go ahead and try and show off your stuff it's like but we don't want to why do we have to if you want to opt into it, then go for it. Go ahead and do it. You know, put out a little bit of content, show off a little bit, and and have a good time, and 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 you know, create that content. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. I think I think that'd be fair. Yeah, of course. I yeah. just don't think people will. Um, That's yeah. fair. Uh, let's. I want to talk about the Overwatch League season three prize pool. Uh, we've been. Uh, Eric did an awesome job of kind of like aggregating the information from the prize pools from the last. Three years to just kind of show us kind of how this, uh, how, where the money is going. And it was kind of pretty interesting. Uh, in 2018, there was $3.5 million being distributed among all teams um, for, for season uh, finishes. In mm. 2019, you had $5 million distributed to 15 out of the 20 teams. And then in 2020, you have 5 million going to 95% uh, of it's going to go to the top 8 to 12 teams, uh, which is pretty interesting. If you're watching the video or, yeah, the video, it'll make a lot more sense. Uh, but just kind of break it down a little bit. We've seen, which is kind of interesting, we've seen the season results, uh, payouts go up quite a bit or not quite a bit by 200k from last season so it started at 3 million in 2018 
went to 3.5 million in 2019 and then uh 3.7 million in 2020. Uh we also sorry, yes, do you have something to add to that right there? No, no, no like uh, I I thought hmm. does it matter? That was kind I don't of think what that I was... part does. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I don't yeah. think that part matters. That's virtually negligible, I think. Mm. It's like ju- adjusting for inflation almost. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, in season one, combined, the stage playoffs uh, for all the stages were a $500,000 prize pool. In 2019, <laughs> it was $1.5 million. So a lot mm. heavier there. In 2020... What we did is uh, we counted midseason, uh, the midseason um, tournament as uh, stage playoffs. And that's 1.050 million. 1.05 mm. million. Um, so a little bit less, but that doesn't include the $250,000 that goes to All Stars. Right. So there's $250,000 mm. to All Stars there. And then, yeah, so that's, I mean, ultimately what we're looking at here is we're seeing, we're seeing the, the interstage or mid season, not end of season money actually, uh, go down a little bit, but it's far more concentrated, right? Mm. $500,000. Whereas if you finish third, in the Overwatch League in 2020 for season payoffs, playoffs, that's how much money you get. $500,000. So, I mean, I don't know. Any, any insight, philosophy on, like, do you like this route that is, I would say, far more heavily skewed towards winners and top teams? Or is this something that uh, maybe isn't so good? I've, I've Okay, so... <sighs> Generally, I like the top heaviness. Mm. I'll just say these numbers seem so low still in comparison to what, like, the investment that we have totally in comparison is. to, seems just arbitrary, like, right? other esports. Yeah. Like, this is not numbers that gets written into any news article and that blows anyone away, right? Like, well, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll play devil's advocate here. Like, the more that I expose, like, other people who are like, oh, esports, like, what's that? You know, the, the, the Uber drives, you know, the friends, parents, you know, this, that, the other thing. That is a big deal to them. So, like, yeah, but- it, doesn't, it doesn't feel important to us, but it's, oh, wow, you can, you can... You can make a, a million living. Dollars That's a million dollars. Games? That's a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Shoot, drop the college tuition. I'm gonna go pick up Halo. You know, but, it's but that what's, still happens. What's the what's the message that's like more much more significant? The international prize pool money or the Overwatch League money? Especially when oh yeah, by the way, so this kid that's 16 won three million and he's he plays out of his bedroom or yeah. Like on a weekend, he won three agree. million. Or you, t- you tell someone from the outside, by the way, here's an organization that has 15 people behind it working full time on being like tip top competitors. And they're flying all, all around the world and they're making like 250K each. And then there's the prize pool and everyone gets 25,000 and can buy a new Subaru. Ah, maybe maybe Subaru. a used one, actually. Like, come Is that on. a pizza or a car maker? <laughs> I, I don't think... I, I think you've already sold them at that point. They're like, oh, you get healthcare and there's benefits and you get a salary. Like, I'm all in. I don't think they care so much that there's like a prize pool. I don't think yeah. they look at it as like a, a tournament so much as it is like, this is a job. This is a career. I get I also, things, I get benefits from this. I also don't think that you're probably framing it in that conversation as here's all the different esports grand payouts and then yeah. compared to nothing else, right? You're just saying, yeah, mm-hmm. in esports you can win a million dollars or a 60 year old kid pays $3 million. Is, my point is if I want to bring someone on the Overwatch train, I say here's the what the players make a year. It's not, Mm -hmm. here's the price money. Yeah, no, 100%. It's all of the tertiary stuff. I don't think the price pool really matters to them. And it's actually, in comparison to that, comically low. Yeah. Especially for doing poorly. I think, like, the top two or three, it's not comically low. It's it's a chunk of money. 
Definitely, definitely. It's how much was first place? First place for season playoffs next year is going to be one point five million. One point five million, dude. Like there have been IEM tournaments for CS that were more because of the internal Grand Slam. We're not talking yeah. about a one-time tournament in an esport that doesn't have a league. Sure, but that makes it worse, no? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that if Overwatch went to eight bi-month or six bi-monthly tournaments and took out the millions of dollars and just did $5 million tournaments every two months, like, oh, cool, look at all this money, but look at how, ta- like, uh, how, um, like, unsteady the infrastructure is. Um, look at how uh, results driven it is. Like that was one. That's one of the biggest. Uh, like the the biggest criticisms of esports is it's so results driven that if you're not winning, you're losing, and like losing everything. Sure. Yeah. I mean, that's probably still not true. Like if you're competing at an IEM. And you're again, making right, you're many am, times the sure. average income. Of, I yeah, the, like yeah, I think yeah. at the very highest level, yes, you can draw the comparisons to then the very mm. highest level of Overwatch League, and yes, mm. the prize pools are less. And at the same time, you look at you're gonna love this. You just get professional sports, right? Where like they get like I can't remember what the players get, but they get like sometimes they get like cars. I've seen in the past. Sometimes mm. they get and, like how arbitrary is that to their eighty million dollar contract? Yeah, over yeah. Eight makes years. no sense. Yeah. Sure. Doesn't matter. So you're right. People don't talk about the Super Bowl and be like, look at how much money they're gonna make. Yeah. But I think what they yeah. what what the money conversation does is it legitimizes the industry. And when I say yeah. that, mm. uh there's five million dollars in prize pool money um for um an esports league of kids playing video games. Yeah. That does carry weight rather than there's 225 different players in the Overwatch League and all are making at least $50,000. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. It, it, it I, w- I would agree with that. It, it kind of does feel more of like a PR thing rather than like an actual, like, oh boy, like, aren't you guys excited to win a bunch of money? Like, yeah. There's a nice I, I bonus. Tell me you don't get, success either way. Tell me you make $500,000 a year or $250,000 a year and you get a check for $50,000 and that's still not like, oh, damn, sweet. I'm going to go buy something cool. So I think the personal yeah, impact I mean, is larger sweet, but... than the yeah. mathematical impact that we mm-hmm. we try to equate to it. Mm-hmm. I, I think I just would like to see someone become a millionaire on a stage, not behind a desk signing a contract. If that makes sense. There, it is it is a lot more like sexy in that way where, you know, TI comes around and it's 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 fifty million dollars and this kid from, you know, some random country that mm. somebody in, you know, East East Bum, you know, New Jersey isn't gonna know where that's from and he's he's now a millionaire from playing video games. Like that's that's a that's a very salacious mm. headline, right? Like I definitely understand where you're coming from, but it's I don't know. I would also much rather not see the other 99 players playing out of their basement because they didn't win. Sure. I mean, that's fair, but like, that's also not the case, right? With, uh, with the Overwatch League anyway, 50 K is not basement money. Other way, everywhere else, but LA. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think in, last thing on that, I think in general, like the philosophy of it, I think is interesting to, to Yiska's point where it is more top heavy now. We'll see if that ever increases with, you know, rev share coming in next year, I believe 2021. Um, I don't know if that increases. I don't know if that decreases. I don't know if it matters. I think in general, um, like you said, it, it is more of a PR thing. So it'll be uh, it'll be interesting. Let's talk about some of the roster moves this week. Yes, right, we yes, don't have yes. anything else. Uh, do we have anything else? No. Uh, do we I talk mean, about it's... Houston Outlaws being purchased by Beasley Broadcast Group? I don't have any insight to that other than it's not the uh, real estate investor in Houston. Mm. That was yeah, not by a, what was it? What was his name? He kept just like adding people on Twitter, like, "Hey, Kobe, you wanna you wanna invest in my esports biz?" Hey. Uh, Tesla guy, you wanna you wanna pay some money? Esports is that hot new business. Yeah, he seemed pretty uh pretty uh rough. Uh, the one thing I will say about the Beasley media stuff, um, 
they own like a, a new like esports like radio station that's like local to around Michigan, I think. Um, I had met one of the guys at BlizzCon and talked with them a little bit. I don't know. I don't know how that relationship's going to work now that th- th- basically a broadcasting site, right, is partially owned by a company who has stake in the Overwatch League. Does that? H- how do they handle that? That that's kind of just interesting from kind of like a journalism standpoint. Like, mm. are you going to have to, you know, c- caveat everything with like, well? Before before we talk about the Boston uprising, we do have to say that we are partial owners in the Houston Outlaws, and we are you know partnered with them, you know, third party. You just know, just remember that tie-ins. NetEase owns an Overwatch League franchise. Yeah, all of a sudden, none of that matters. I mean, I I guess it would matter if I was like in China and I saw like what they were doing. It, it definitely matters. I just it's it not matters, as but direct. it's just it's it's clear that the Overwatch League doesn't really care. No, they don't care. Um, and I don't know that a ton of people will care about this either. But I, I just just selfishly, I'm just like, okay, how does how is this going to work? How how does this change how you're going to approach Houston Outlaws content? Does this how what does this look like? It just that that was basically my only point I wanted to make is like. They do have like a, a site that they broad not broadcast to, but like that that is partially owned and and that might paint the picture differently, right? So it, it'll be it'll be interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's a weird one, especially that the other investor didn't get the the money there. Should I should I tell a, a hilarious story? About about lead. Sure. what what what, what was the name no? of the former uh, investor again? I don't I don't remember. Uh, d- I don't does chat anyone in chat know? Okay, so the story is this, and I'm not going to t- say any names, um, who it was, but basically we were like before Jacob Wolf announced that uh, information, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that Lee Lee Zeben Zeben. Yeah, Lee Zybin, right? Like okay. we did some research everywhere, right? And eventually we got someone and he knew. So we contact this guy and one of us calls him and he tells us the name and we're like, wow, this is a Houston real estate mogul. We got him. So we look it up. We call up the secretary. They're like, we don't know anything about that. Interestingly, also an investor in Immortals. Turns out, <laughs> we misheard the name. <laughs> <laughs> we had the story way before Jacob Wolf, but we misheard the name. Oh, and no. Therefore, never got the drop on that one. Yeah. That was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you just called up random, like. Oh, yeah, gosh. random per- person that was randomly involved with. Uh, random IMC Houston and... real estate. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> that was, Do you guys know yeah, anything we about like, esports? Uh, no, what's that? Like, why is, yeah. why is this guy talking about? Yeah, yeah. But he wasn't even like, no comments, just like, what are you talking about? I have no idea. No. I'd love to give you a comment. I just don't know what you're talking yeah. about. <laughs> and we're like sure bro that's what you would of say in that you position. Do. <laughs> it was like one letter different <laughs> i think it was like lee zyden or something like mm. it was ridiculous but um yeah in the end like um i it, this looks like a much more stable enterprise with mm. a uh more than an individual and of course an individual like seldom comes without a um an investment uh, sort of structure behind them. So sure. I guess it's not fair to say, but it, this looks much more stable than it did in the past. Also, whatever um, conflict of interest there might be, it's definitely better than the old status quo, <laughs> 100% lead of one team owning two teams. Yes, um, very much so. So uh, I, I think it's... It is very nice to that for them to be finally be able to make moves, to uh, convert that um, enthusiastic group of fans um, into venue. Uh, I'm gonna slap viewers. them all on radio stations, wow. man. Jake's gonna have his own radio station. Might have a raucous radio station. Might be the new hotness. Another thing to note: 
is that uh, I, I think this this media group also has like partial stake in Renegades as well, which I thought was kind of interesting. A, mm-hmm. Again, completely like non sequitur, just to like general esports it's, stuff. It, it's, it's amazing it's, it's how interesting, right? How it went from okay, this group also owns the Renegades. Monchi yeah. owned the Renegades five years ago. <laughs> Monchi now owns her Outlaws. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like a seven degrees from like seven bacon. Yeah. Like, okay, how does how is Monty involved with this team? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty wild. Was, who was on yeah. that? So it was wasn't Mangachu mm-hmm. like Zachary Germ Jesus right? I believe so at some Remember point. Yeah. Jesus. What happened to him? I don't know. Is he streaming now? I don't know. Good question. Chat, get on that. Let us know. The good old Renegades roster. Back in the day. We, let's talk about these movements. We don't have a ton of time. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I want to talk about the Florida Mayhem first. Florida Mayhem re-signed Gargoyle, signed <laughs> Kuki as head coach, Docs as assistant, rumor to sign Yaki and... Who's... Gangnam Jin. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, good. I yeah, we'll see. I think Gangnam Jin's a solid pickup. If the rumors are to be true, I like Yaki. I think I need to see. I really need to see this team actually play Chill. a little bit more. I don't see it being promising. Chill. Chill. What's that? Yes. Look, bed right now. You you gonna say yes or no? Uh huh. Florida most most approved team. No. Oh, not I want to take that. Really? I want to take that. Yeah. You think Florida is going to be the most improved team? Yeah. Just in where they will end over the entire season. Yeah. With these moves, keep in mind that, that it is sells kind you. of. It, it, keep in mind they were dead last. And sure, sure, a hundred percent. Yeah. So, but like, you I, don't I think, think it, any other like so you don't think Houston could improve? Sign two more runaway than players, and now you're the most. Yeah, I team. don't like these aren't. This doesn't inspire it's that same a, level of faith. I mean, it's it's more than two signings overall, and uh, it's also new coaching. Even though I'm not sure how impactful that is. Yeah. But it is definitely better than what they had before. Sure. I would say the yeah. the new the new. So, the other ones don't look that promising. Let's be honest. I think Houston is just about the only one where I could realistically say that they could, like, I wouldn't be me- like very surprised if they were more improved. But other than that, Boston isn't definitely Defiant Boston. Isn't. Isn't. Paris, I, I don't. Paris, Paris three, like three M right players, really. I don't think yeah. so. I th- I think like the EM Jeez. players are good in a vacuum. Boot camping but then... in Korea? Yeah. Atlanta can't be because they add <laughs> they actually placed get... well. Yeah, they they, they cannot well, go yeah. more than five places up, which they likely won't. Yeah, um, I think I do think Defiant will do okay. I'm just not willing to give that to Florida just off the bat. That's not. That's not Fusion like a lot. Fusion is a good one. Fusion is also a good one. I, I will say. Fusion, Fusion is, is yeah. but, they, but they finished yeah. what, 12th? Uh, 10th. Dallas. 10th? No, my dudes. Yeah. That's still Dallas. Yeah. That is still uh, Dallas. I think there's, there's, there's a slight possibility. I think that's a slight possibility. Yeah, I, I don't know if I'd give that to Florida. I don't think so. I don't but think they I'd, definitely, I'd really... like, what, uh, one of the. I would, I honestly, I think that, yes, I think there's a little bit of a risk. I think that there's no room for mediocre improvement with this squad. In my, in my opinion, I don't, I I don't think that they just go from 20th to like 18th. (sighs) Like if they're going to improve, I could see it like six, seven plus. I don't, I don't see that with these signings though. I mean, I like Yaki. I want to see don't a new. I want to see a new off tank. That's it. I don't like Gargoyle. I think it's just everything together, right? Like, I think this is a roster based on the players they have that tremendously um, should gain from, based on the players they had gained from the two to two lock, and we haven't seen as much because they didn't make playoffs. Sure. Um, I think new coaching goes a long way. I think um, 
they significantly change their no i th I, I don't think that's fair to say but at least they they got a new staff in there i suppose i s still think like pieces like Saya Player probably are very good once we get into hit scan situations. Sure, sure. Um, I agree that the players they picked up mid season were average, and I also disagreed with it at the time. I just think that the additional talent in Gundam, Gundam Jin and Yaki is. It like, definitely is. Other than getting the entirety of Runaway, uh, it, it, like, I think that's, that's enough to, for me to say. That I feel where okay, so so uh, loose projections. Where do you think this improves them? Then uh, where, also, where you... okay, wait, real quick. Do you assume that fate is there or is gone? That's a great question. We've heard either or at this point. I assume he stays. So I okay. Let's assume he stays. I still like not big on the team as a whole. You add Yaki. That's an improvement. Yeah. Is it the most improvement? <laughs> I, I don't think so. Just like off the top of my head, adding Gognam Jin definitely again helps, but does that boost them up past some of these other teams? I, I again, I don't know. I don't just off the top of my head, I would say no. But I, I am interested to see like, where do you think this, this team siding. finishes? Then? I hate siding with Yiska. Where do you think this team finishes then? Like low like the the minimum to like the highest point you could see them finishing with this roster as a standard. i think they can get play-ins really um, yeah hmm. uh but low, probably on the lower side yeah 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 i mean like maybe 12 but i think that would be like my max 12 is play-ins yeah it's eight spots. the thing is it's keep in mind spots. they yes their their movement upwards has a lot more potential because they were so low. And yeah. also, if we if we don't want to just keep it on, um, on, like just predicated on score, but overall level of play, I think they were worse than their records suggested for much of the season. So um, I think in that regard, just like from a relative point, when we're not trying to you know pin it onto wins necessarily onto placements, I think this team will, will also look a lot better. Um, I'll give you this. I'll give you this. If they start off doing well, I think they'll they'll have a very nice upward trajectory. But I don't trust Mayhem in general to like scramble and solve problems. Like they're very bad at putting out fires. I, I agree that with that. I just think that they, because of their uh, travel schedule and their placing, so to speak, sure. uh, uh, that like their location and their general setup from the org. Mm. I think they are less likely to escalate than other teams are based on the on the location. For instance, a team like Boston, dude, that has so much escalation potential based on the infrastructure and whatnot. Like, and, and just just to be clear, you, by escalation you mean like chaotic, like variants. It just could things be... infrastructurally going very wrong. So and therefore, outside of yeah, though, there's very little like almost their whole new their whole coaching staff is new at least part way through last season yeah mm. right so yeah. kooky's new yep still uh, kind of a new unread coach unread came in end of june Something um, like that, yeah insight was mid season i don't remember where um docs is new yeah and then I don't know if you call like Yip and Andro. Well, Andro's a streamer, so that doesn't matter. Uh, but Yip as a performance coach. I don't know if you count that. So like this is largely this is we are bordering minus the player changes, uh, at least on the the coaching side, a complete rebuild on the coaching side of sure. Florida Mayhem. So I don't know if I totally agree that well, they haven't shown us that they can organizationally make this work because it's it's virtually a new organization uh yes from a coaching aspect but the people who are in charge of like yeah. putting those people in charge are and and familiar. this is this is already so you the think voice this in the goes back of to my the guys who don't like, like to to like ben spoon and inner flame and jake coon like you think that that yeah, goes up yeah, that actually high? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. i think so 
uh, like that's the, that's already the, the other Jeska voice in the back of my mind. It's like the same voice that screamed, you don't know that much about Chengdu. It's the same voice that says, there's still three of the same people that have a lot of say there. And they're yeah. locked up for two seasons, bro. <laughs> what are you doing? Like that's 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 still there. Yeah. Talk about a team that that All just right. got worse, and that's All another right. one we can talk about. But oh. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm ready to jump on the the mayhem bandwagon just yet. I think they've improved. Are they going to be the most improved? That's a that's a tough shout. We um we Eric has put together a very thorough betting procedure for us for the next season. I'm I excited. did. I'm, I did skim through that. I, I have skimmed to, through it, and it, a little bit. I was of like, "That's a lot of stuff. That's a lot. That's a game show, yeah. Yeah, yeah that is literally a game show. <laughs> but it's gonna make it great. Let's talk about the London Spitfire. Rumored to sign Shui, Sanguinar, and Highly. They've released Bedosian and Quatamine. Uh at this point, the only person left from last season is Krillin, right? Yes, sir. No main tanks. And again, they so they have to have eight people signed by now. Yeah. But we by actually don't have the public announcements. Yeah. IMT, yeah. head coach of NYXL. Is that, that the guy who Sideshow yeah, was talking guy. about? That's, oh, okay. the, that's the doctor. Well, I was wrong. That's, Fair that's enough. The yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that would happen either. Yeah, that no, is, that's, that's surprising. That's rather interesting. Yeah. He's trying I to spoon feed us. Okay, that is very interesting. Okay, so who, for those, there's a very good behind the scenes video about him. Mm. Um, I think it's also leaked in the tree. Is that the same one? Yeah, Probably. this guy is actually a legit, legitimate doctor. Uh, I think he was even on some rather good in university, um, neuroscience, and that is very interesting that he turns into a head coach position this into a head coach position it makes sense though like if we're talking about like a lot of a lot of the structure that i generally hear from people favoring being favored in the overwatch league is that the head coach doesn't necessarily need to be the one that understands the ins and outs mm -hmm. the macro and the micro uh, to a t but it's rather the person that either has a very good leadership skill intuitively and just knows how to lead people or knows how to create effective structures and hire people also, of course, into positions where they can um, help him out in terms of, you know, yeah. the in-game knowledge stuff. So for someone with a degree like that to be um, in that position, it is interesting. It does, I would say, I don't know how often that succeeded. Like. That's that's one of the phenomena that you know we always talk about the money ball and whatnot because it feels so it feels so weird that this scientific numbers approach and this you know like the analytical approach works to this and in the vast majority of cases where like in in sports history a lot of it is just through experience and gut feeling and just mm -hmm. like an inherent talent to lead people that goes there and I. Like, it's interesting that especially in New York, like, okay, this guy, of course, in his approach is very different than Wizard Young, but sure. still the underlying premise being we're breaking it down to a science, right? Sure. And trying to influence people that way rather than, you know, have more... Like a super logical approach compared to, you know, more of a, a feeling-based kind of and creative... Yeah, I mean, of course, this is like super from the outside, and this before sure. we know, this guy could also be a great leader of men, just uh, you know, innately. But mm. um, just like from the outside, from the from the cosmetics of it, it is a very interesting uh, situation there. I would also love, 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 love to see so just like one or two examples of the things where he applied neuroscience to his coaching. Like, mm. I just want to know something about that. Like, what is he doing? Is That'd it, be a great like, interview question, yeah. Yeah, like, you know, I I understand that he wouldn't want to give this away, but, like, how he, how, just how differently he maybe thinks about things, like, for yeah. instance, player seeding. Who do, like, what kind of player characters do I put in against next to each other? How is it important? You know, like, do we do something with language differently? Do we build in cues? Do we teach differently? Like, all these questions... 
would be very interesting uh, if this is at all altered, especially from someone that I think even wrote his thesis on a topic very related to it. So mm. maybe I'll just dive into his thesis if that's publicly available. We'll see. I would imagine it's probably all in Curry and now. Yeah, but Google uh, Translate is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Papers are often written in, in English, imagine? depending on the university. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, fair enough. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess we should we should let's just we're gonna come back to London in a second. NYXL mm -hmm. sign Hotma this week over Bianca at mm -hmm. the off tank role, and uh, are rumored to st still rumored to sign have signed. <laughs> Who are you? Uh, on top of new head coach IMT. <sighs> I mean, what's your, what's your thoughts on this team? If we're going to talk about Florida being like the most improved, is NYXL a candidate for the, the least improved or like the farthest to fall from grace? See, this is where the neuroscientist comes in. We're just like a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> You're already play. bought You're... in. I can't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> like to just drill into his skull and just take that thing out that got, got him benched in Apex Season 3 and then he just comes back <laughs> as a Terminator. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, I can't believe you're already just on the sauce. <laughs> he's, no, he's, that's some sriracha, bro. He's um, deep in it, I don't know. No, I, I, I think generally what I've to consider that Taking a chance on who are you is taking a chance. That's a like, big gamble. That's a gamble with a capital G. But you still yeah. have Libero. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's just like an off-season move that, that just could be very empty. Where it's just like, okay, this is useless. We don't, we're never going to use you. Also, I think, John, if, if you have someone in your practice room that just, you know, you see on the side just like smashing mice, like a... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like you know, Let's uh, make like some a, content like a around skater. that guy, by the way. Like a robot in a Tesla factory, just going like crunch mice, next crunch mice, <laughs> next crunch. It's, it's like <laughs> okay, right, like I I think that's of course like this is just like the rumors that go around. There's some evidence to back it up. Many like for the people that haven't been around in Apex season two, this kid was literally the best player in the world getting um season mvp in season two i think yeah. was it no finals mvp it was because yeah. jay hong got season mvp okay maybe second best player in the world not genji pretty much revolutionized with hacks all together the how this th things played played yeah. genji into farah we all thought this kid was a god epic season three rolls around suddenly this kid is omega benched <laughs> just like because of <laughs> he got benched from issues. flex support <laughs> oh man, I he, still can't got, get over that. He got benched, and then Lunatic High hated him so much that they then also won Apex Season 3 without him, just to prove that he, uh, that they could, and that he's, that, that, that he's a little ass about it. And then he goes to the next team, and then he has fallouts with fellow players there in in a way where you need to separate them now and then he gets onto another team and then it doesn't look much better and his level of play also drops and his attitude doesn't at all match his skill level anymore and i hope he like he was super young admittedly yeah. at that right like it's very possible that he since then has fixed his um his attitude towards like just like being a teammate We've seen it mm. time and time again. It's very possible. I've talked about this co like made up concept um, of like giants in the distance of just like a guy that looks nuts at some point in his career. And the closer he comes to eligibility, they get smaller and smaller and smaller. And at some point they're not no longer attractive Flower. for teams. You know, and you know, who he's a prime example. Subtly fit that bill. I think this season is probably sparkle. I think Sparkle maybe yeah. unintentionally will be a giant in the distance to, to use your metaphor. I don't think it's completely fitting, but I think with the situation that he's he's put it he's put in and the team that's around him, I, I really do wonder if the expectations are gonna be met from the community. I I, yeah, I, truly I think I'm worried point, on you, that. He's he's pretty nutty. It's, it yeah, in a vacuum, that, he's great. But yeah. with that team, though, is that team going to do good? I don't know. 
it's, it, it it helped that he like got public light in a meta where it's literally like best doom wins game sure yeah um but and that even then he didn't look that trans transcendentally anymore um when any, everyone else in the world started playing Doomfist as well. Yeah. And then certainly players like Sinatra and Huxley just like look more complete. Um, but yeah, it's, I think this is super meta dependent for him as well. Like mm. there's definitely a lot of metas where this kid is just sitting in Paris and <laughs> sparkle in Paris. <laughs> like, it's just, <laughs> <laughs> Just like eating baguette and drinking uh, wine, like. Oh. All right, so but you guys, you guys haven't talked about Hotba at all. I mean, I yeah. I personally I'm a big fan of Hotba. Mm. I think that this uh, is definitely a big upgrade over Bianca. Um, and I don't know. Like for me, I'm like, whatever. Who are you? He plays or he doesn't. Like I'm not worried because yeah, okay, I, we, I understand. Yeah. We get we get Libero. Right, yeah. so mm, yeah. we get Libero if we don't get who are you, and who are you is at least you would hope playing because he's playing better than Libero. So whatever, but Bianca for me was was a very obvious like weak point in in this uh, roster overall after XL two disbands. Mm -hmm. They 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 bring Bianca up and. Uh, a lot of people ask me to go, John, like, where would you put Hotba? And I go, I don't know if NYXL would uh, promote Bianca if they were planning on picking up Hotba, but I was wrong. They were. And so, like, I don't know. I love this. I think that this is a great move. We can, you know, meme about who are you all you want, but this is, I don't know. I like this tank duo a lot. I think it's solid. I, I think Hotba lost a lot of postseason value with roll with roll mm -hmm. lock with the, the roll Q whatever you want to call it um his 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 appeal was that he was pretty flexible and and looked solid on on some of those DPS heroes um I don't I don't know I think he's fine I don't I, I there's nothing really wrong with it I think it's I do I, I do want to say sorry Mecco. I'm interrupting you for a second and saying yeah. that uh we have a Houston Outlaws coach telling us that Mecco <laughs> Is is an is an upgrade or uh, Hotba is a downgrade over Mecco, and I find I I I don't think you're wrong, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I also true. think that's very funny and fortunate yeah. that you also <laughs> signed. <laughs> like, of course you did. Otherwise, you would have signed Hotba. Uh, mm. Yeah. Anyways, um, but yeah, like honestly, with Mecco, Mecco was rumored to be leaving a long time ago, and yeah. knowing that Mecco wasn't going to be there. I'd much prefer it over Bianca. Mm. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. Like, I don't think he'll be like a weak spot per se. I mm. think I, th I think people are still. I think there's some people who like I don't know want to put him in like the you know the top two or three flex tanks in Overwatch League, and I think that's that's wrong. Yeah, very uh, wrong. But I also I would put him in like the top four through eight flex tanks in Overwatch League. <laughs> Maybe. What, what Maybe. And again, I know I know that I think I'm I think I'm higher on hot bow than a lot of people are. And that's I don't fair. know. Like whatever, flame me. I'm an <laughs> idiot. No one listens for my opinions anyway. So. Like what is interesting is Okay, so I've heard a while ago that and now it's sufficiently distanced from that, so I don't think You break an NDAs, boy? It's opaque who who <laughs> gave me that information, but I've heard that teams are not going to fly everyone out every time they go somewhere, which to me is ridiculous because See, if you're I staying somewhere for like several weeks to month, I think everyone should be there. Especially like like what do, do you do with uh, if you don't have an academy team and you just leave three of your two ways at home? What do they do? Yeah. Just solo queue? That's that's maddening, but. And even coaches, some of them will remain home. I think outside... But, sorry. Sorry, real quick. Like, I think, theoretically, there will be situations where you, where you fly out your team and then someone is just, like, sitting next to a toddler in the, in the, um, in the plane and just gets sick because 
as you may know, they have homing missile snot that directly points to, at your mouth. And like then a player like Hotbar could theoretically, and I'm not sure what the rule set actually is, but theoretically, like yeah. I don't think anything changed. They he could theoretically, if they have another off tank, jump into the DPS role then, right? Like if you have yeah. a limited amount, depending on who you also bring. Like the, that's the question. Like is Nmax only ever going to bring one off tank? Well, then Hotbar cannot be used in in other worlds, right? But otherwise, that would be an interesting metric, like. Which who are the players? I guess you could maybe even give them a title. Like who are the players that like see the most travel? If that's going to be the case for a lot of these teams, like who are your who are your actual starters that are like on the plane no matter what? They're here. They're flexing around. They're doing everything for the team. Like who 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 are those players who on average is is flying the most for these teams? I think that'd be something to uh, to keep track of. Mm. Um. So I. <clears throat> And again, so I want to distinguish something. Are you saying that there are players who are going to play regularly in the Overwatch League who won't travel? No. Like, no, I'm, cause, I'm cause saying. Because there's, there's, there's a few schools of thought on how teams are going to approach travel. The first one is that you have, you know, 12 people on your roster, but nine of them travel, and the other three are really just backups of backups. And, like, in case somebody gets mm. six, falls out, then, boom, they're on the team. Otherwise, they're really never designated to be there. There's another group of people who think that we're going to have Sabi Olby and Libero play DPS in China and Korea while we're going to have Nene and Who Are You playing DPS in uh, Western Hemisphere. And I think that that is mm. bullshit. Yeah. Um, I, I totally see one way of like, there's no chance another person's playing. There's already, you know, you're, you're three deep in a, in a roster, then yeah, sure. That person doesn't travel. I have no problems with that. Fine. Mm -hmm. But the fact that people think that other people aren't traveling so that they can rest up and play elsewhere. You're not saying yeah. that, that that's, that's I've, what's I, being said. I'm, I'm not sure if, um, if this traveling thing, all five that, flex that will DPS be... will be at every homestand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Thank no you. No kidding. <laughs> Thank um, you. Um, I I think we will experience will have to tell us. I will have to team tell the teams what the best cause of action is and just how the players feel and what what makes the most sense, right? I, I think there will be scenarios where someone's just like, I'm so drained from this travel. Can I can I recuperate at home and just play some sure. solo queue? Take it. My my mechanics feel so off. I didn't get the quality practice. Please leave me here. We have three weeks of free games. Um, yeah, like I mean, Chengdu, Chengdu, and they do this with team. hockey all the time with goalies. <laughs> like goalies are like, hey, you've played six games in a row. Like sit out, have a night off. Like it's mm -hmm. you know sports metaphors I mean, that, are perfect. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's not the bodily issue, like the anatomical limitations, right? But um, I think in many cases, it will just be the same traveling because they're clearly the best and clearly the best to bring around. And they also resistant to the travel and they don't have to travel much for many teams as well. So um, I think generally... Um, how teams approach or protect from these fringe cases where something goes horribly wrong, mm -hmm. that will be interesting to me because I yeah. think this might be important for some of the edge cases where it's like, like last, last, let's say last year there was like this two way issue with fusions against Shanghai, right? Sure. We don't know how that team, that, that game would have otherwise gone, right? Um, like, what if, what if you don't have a, an axiom there then what do you do do you put a tps play on you on do like, didn't uh didn't nyxl have to do that last season didn't they have to put like mono back on like main support for some reason like somebody had to leave or like somebody was ill and they had to like do some weird role swapping i want to say yeah this maybe school. maybe some that. Yeah, team, for, for a little right yeah, yeah. yeah just for a brief brief time like that those are gonna happen and i think that's only gonna happen more with travel I think it'll be interesting to see if teams have built their rosters with those contingency plans. Mm -hmm. Because do we some... have Hotbar come in play DPS? Do we have somebody like Half Equal come in play DPS? Can also play Flex Tank 
maybe maybe we're wrong in evaluating their uh their flex capability has has fallen right we would to, to evaluate that as lower maybe that's incorrect mm, yeah i think some teams just have pretty substantial travel schedules sure and they are their crisis management will be much more important than others oh yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, and um i think that also has to be considered in roster building and roster maintenance mm. and um we will see how that all turns out but one of those aspects could be players like hotbar like yeah. afikul or whatever that can just you know not not to a full starter the quality of a full sure. starter likely right even though Haffy and Hotbar definitely have their heroes could be it yeah. feels like they they could be starters <laughs> on dps um but yeah just like have players like that flex a little bit i it's it's hard to foretell how many cases there will be and if it's just a french case and nobody should really care i don't think it'll be french like, yeah how how we basically didn't really remember what happened with mano there right where yeah. they had to switch like that wasn't a big story it was a cool little thing if it sure. becomes a big little thing then <laughs> then we'll uh I mean, it seemed see. like every other week it was, you know, oh, this team's sick. You know, we have to quarantine them away like they're just pounding emergencies, you know, trying to, you know, be capable to even play on stage. I think that only gets worse when you're traveling around and you don't have, you know, the, the go to, you know, dollar store, you know, remedies that at your disposal that you would in, you know, L.A. I think it only gets worse and travel definitely takes just just doing the act of traveling, having to get up at whatever hours and, and having to get on a plane and be around so many different, you know, types of people. It, it's there's going to be germs. There's going to be, you know, this, the illness is going to be a lot more severe this season. So, yeah, I think there's there's reason to believe that somebody's going to get like some nasty bug and spread it around. And, you know, it's going to happen. I mean, it happens in pro sports. Right. But at the yeah. same time, like. I don't know. I'm I'm really excited. You've got like about a huge bench to pull from in, in traditional sports where it's it's less of a I mean, do they? But uh but like we're gonna have Sefi on the show next week and sure. this is gonna probably be one of the main questions we're gonna ask him is like without divulging everything, like are you mm -hmm. worried about travel and how it's gonna affect the health of your players? Like what what is at your disposal to prevent that? And um, you know, hopefully he'll answer <laughs> so um yeah, yeah. i, I want to talk i want to talk we have so many we have we have to go faster we might okay. not even go Let's through go all fast. these houston outlaws mm -hmm. sign rappel and mecco re-sign dante um nice. they're at their 12 mm -hmm. yeah i mean like probably for the free agents they could have gotten Really sick pickups, I think. Uh, Mecco is huge. Pickups. Didn't see that one happening. No, I saw that. I saw the rumor on Reddit, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Houston yeah. out here making moves. Yeah, they um, schmoovin' on them. Rappel is interesting as well. Um, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, th um, I think in general, huge thumbs up. Signing Dante again. I, I kind of assumed that that was going to be the case, but. I guess that's gonna happen. Yeah. Of course, Joe, duck, duck, duck. You know, rappel, Harsha. I um, mean, yeah, yeah. And to your credit. yeah, I, I think still they are twelve. Don't like their main support uh, options. Like, mm. that, it would be very good if someone could just retire and decide to like, you know, maybe one of the off tanks. Um, I mean, again, like. Flame Flame had said that I think their their free agent signings are done, but he yeah. he very casually left himself open the the back sure door of well you know maybe maybe there'll be retirements and maybe we'll trade people who knows yeah yep I I, I side with the sideshow here in saying that I don't think Houston's done moving people they might not be signing free agents but I think movements will happen also, for, sure. for now is a very very stretchable phrase you know we're done yeah. for now um we'll see i think uh but in general they have yeah is this not yeah. a team mostly improved 
I, I like this team, team and, I, and I would like more. if if you're going to give me like three teams that are, you know, most improved. I think Houston Outlaws, Philadelphia Fusion, and uh, Florida, and Florida being the wild card. Yeah, May- Mayhem does have a good shot just because of how low they were. And, and that's like, the thing that, is right. You yeah. can't like how and there there are teams we talked about it outside of. Houston and Philadelphia, are there that many teams that are obviously improved? Mm, and yeah, we had this but, conversation last week, and there's not. Mm. I agree. There's a lot of improvement in the coaching stuff, especially. Probably the most improved part on, on uh, yeah. Outlaws. No biases. Um, no biases. I, I really like that. That's, that's exactly where I'm going with this, because... Like, as a World War II and World War II, I mean, season one and season two veteran, I will tell you, the personal relationships that you have really, really warp your, oh, yes. your image of it's what re- you yeah, have of it. It's real rough. Like, I, I overrate I hate the dreams, hell so out that's of why Death, I have Dallas. At 20. <laughs> <laughs> and I overrated the hell out of Toronto. So, at, at least, I mean, to be fair, Toronto and... Dallas at least looked so decent at the nah. Yeah. Dallas didn't look decent at the start of season one, but I think Toronto looked decent at the start of season yeah. two. Toronto, yeah, but, they did. See, maybe maybe I'm I'm already like the the pendulum is maybe too much in the other side where I'm like super skeptical and super pessimistic because I what know if, that what this bias I'm trying to overcompensate now. But what if friends yeah. of Yiska just do bad in Overwatch League? Are you cursed? Um. Maybe. Let me think. Let me think. Hmm. He's, he's got a. Maybe. Yeah. It's possible. <laughs> it's it's very possible. Friendship. And now the question is: Do I make them worse, or do I talk to people that are under the decline? And they <laughs> for it. They have... <laughs> <laughs> you have an uncanny pulse on who's losing. Dream just said he unfriended Yiska. Yep. So. You know, you know, the, you know the kids. <laughs> you know the cats at retirement home that just like crawl onto the laps of the of the next elderly that's yeah. about to die. That's basically me. <laughs> you shepherd them into the the cold night. You're the black cat. Yeah. Yeah. You know. <laughs> just purring the last. <laughs> As they purr their last death oh, rattle. Oh, <laughs> like, man. Oh, man. That's too funny. I don't know, but yeah, I love, I mean, Mecha, I think, is huge. Mm, big pickup. Uh, love that. Yeah. Um, Vancouver Titans. Rumored to have signed uh, Jay Hong, which is pretty great. Release Hureg, who says he's LFT as coach. And, of course, they've released Rappel as well. I like, see, everything that I've heard about Hureg makes me think he'd actually be, like, a solid coach. I think he would actually be, like, a good assistant coach. I don't know how smart he is about the game, but it sounds like he's just, like, a good person to have around. Very much like a AKA a an assistant room. coach. An assistant coach yes. is just a good person to have around. Uh, but he seems like, from what I hear, he seems like he would fit that role very well. Whereas his days as a player probably are, are numbered. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. when you look at this, so Fisher is still rumored to be right. That's that still isn't confirmed. What's that? Uh, Fisher for Vancouver Titans. Oh no, yeah, I think that's still rumored. It's still rumored. So you're looking at, uh, if if you're looking at the sheet in video, I mean. Uh, I mean, okay. go. You yeah. know the the important thing, really, to say about this whole reg news is, who y'all hago pion reg? Get him off this Crap hill! This. I thought I escaped this. Why? <laughs> it is finally over. The three uh. horsemen have finally exited the Overwatch League. Also, don't break who y'all back. <laughs> or he will fly back home. Like, basically, you you saw that clip. I, I I will sing again, but you saw that clip. That's him on a plane as well. He will take that plane to, in order to not be killed somewhere in China, basically. <laughs> so, that, like, um, I think that writing was on the wall. Honestly, yeah. From what I hear, he has a really cool info. Yeah. No, cool, like a really calming vibe about him. He's just like, you know, like 
It's the cool, guy that you meet at the bar and gives you some give, give you fresh. some life changing uh, advice after you come home and you go like, "Wow, this guy! Did I meet God?" Like you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> right. just get breaks and what if God was one of us karaoke version? Jeez, we're not ready for this. Uh, no, no, we're, we're not, not ready for that. Guangzhou Charge signed Krong, Neptuno, <coughs> and Ouya. Ouya. Ouya, I think, was how I was told it was pronounced. I think. All right. Ouya. Like, ooh. So, uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Charge. I still think this team, like, I like Krong. I don't know these main supports, like, either way. Not, I think Neptuno probably plays over Uya. If I had to guess, I don't think you want to diversify like the language that much more. They, I think they come in English to begin with. I don't know how good Uya's English is off the get go. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's way better than Only Wish. I'll tell you that. I, I like I like this Chinese made support really? way more. Okay. Only wish was like very not good. Ouya is solid, at least in China. I don't know how he would stack up elsewhere. Um, but yeah, I think Neptuno probably plays, and people just forget about him. Why? Why he's does not a main support? Nobody say oh, he's not a main support. Maybe I'm just flipping. Maybe I'm just off my rocker. Maybe is this one of those Chinese things where this guy has played every support? I don't. Role maybe just because China. Be he me. also. Maybe it's me. It's also McCree main on the side. Uh, Am I? Did I forget? Let me see. Oh yeah. So just for people who are listening to this broadcast, Kenobi, oh, the oh, no, maybe contenders he's analyst, no, um, never mind me, is in chat and saying that he talked about this very information yesterday with Joe. Joe once again in confirming that this kid was born a boomer <laughs> <laughs> and born with every okay. My point still stands. He probably doesn't see playtime. Okay. He's not playing over shoe. So. No, no, no. He's either not. way. Doesn't matter. And, and to be fair, I asked him, and, and I do remember the conversation. I, I thought this was a different support player. It wasn't. And then I think in that conversation, he clarified the, the role. And I just was like, okay. Yeah. Must, my, I still better than only wish again, you know, minor things that were incorrect. Only, you know, minor he's setbacks, also minor probably setbacks. better than only wish at main support. Let's be honest. Probably. probably. He's also a snack. That's what Reddit keeps telling me. Yeah. Atlanta rain. <laughs> let's talk about the Atlanta rain. <laughs> Signed Sharp this week. We announced uh, or discussed Edison being last week. So, so far, we have seen um, Hawk yeah. uh, Gator kind of used to a uh, Hawk Gator Edison and Sharp on top mm. of the previous roster. Yeah, cool. They're also stacking DPS, right? Yeah, they've like, got quite a, five, quite a lineup. Right? Five and they already I, let one I go. Four. Like, really? Wait. Uh, Let's take a look here. Sharp Edison, <sighs> Baby Bay, Urster. Who else? Sharp. Edison, Sharp, Urster, Baby Bay. Enlayer was gone. Yeah, are you just recounting Enlayer? Maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. I mean, still at that point. like Still four. They have, mm, they have three kind of main hits. But a deep bench. DPS. Yeah. Um, let's see. They've got 10. Solid overall. I like it. I yeah, mean, I, sharp. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah. Solid player, so. Neat. I, I'm just interested to see where and how this, this roster looks. Uh, it's a question for next week, I suppose, but. Yeah. I think Edison's a little bit more flexible than probably what I remember. Maybe even Sharp, to be, to be, to be fair to him. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. That's a that's that's a definitely a bright question. Uh, I don't want to talk about gladiators this week. Valiant, not that. Uh, let's talk about Chengdu. <laughs> Chengdu, rumor do have signed a uh, Cami and Coldest. Yes, and you got their us. head coach okay. just left, which is big sad for me. Mm -mm. Mm. Big downer. I don't yeah. know. 
I think that's a that's a sizable blow. Sometimes um, you just need to light the franchise on fire and quit. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I think there is a slight dispute coming from Chinese social media that coldest may not be correct. I don't know. Just These are all Reddit rumors. Not We've been very yeah, careful in, in the language on the show yes. to like speak to them. And it's tough because if you don't treat mm. rumors as at least credible rumors, as if they're kind of truth, you just have like a, you have Yiska for an hour and a half, just like framing his viewpoint on all the different variables. So we just, we make it very easy. If it's a credible, what we seem is a, at least a credible enough rumor. We treat it as is. Mm. And then uh, we could always just walk it back. Big deal. Mm. Better than like, just being like, let's just not include these guys and not talk about Chengdu at all. Until sure. everybody else has. Stupid I mean show would that be? So, to to well, that point though, Coldest still is very talented. Um, mm -hmm. he he definitely deserves a place in the Overwatch League. It's just it's gonna have to be a Chinese team probably to sign him because nobody else is really willing to to do that. I guess. Um, can can me on you hand? tell us what? about them? There's just like a strength. Just I don't think. Pe uh, okay, maybe so like Kami, like Coldest is is very much. I I know him as like a very strong Zen player. I was talking with Kenobi not too long ago about his other heroes. Um, he, he remembers his Ana being very good. I don't, but there again, I haven't been following as closely as he has, so I trust that his Ana looks very good. Um, Bap, do, don't really remember if if it was as strong or if he even played it. Kami, on the other, on the other hand, started off, at least in my memory, as being like a, a, a promising Genji player, kind of a projectile player. Still is a projectile player that's very strong but has shown a lot more flexibility throughout his multiple seasons. Um, definitely a, a solid backup to Jinmu. I don't think at, he's as aggressive as flashy, but if there ever is a, if there's ever like a tank focused, you know, kind of more passive meta game, I think Kami probably does a little bit better than Jinmu. Um, hmm. He probably has to compete with like Bacon Jack and, and the other DPS players, I, I still, I, I'm, I'm a little bit more concerned with, with Ray leaving, um, kind of late into uh, the postseason. I don't know exactly mm -hmm. how that's gonna affect them in, in general. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if, if that was a big selling point for somebody like Leave coming over, mm -hmm. um, seeing how they've worked before. Um, and that's definitely a big signing for Chengdu, or at least it was supposed to be. I don't know if that, that, that sour grapes now. It, it definitely has still happened. Like he's under contract, but mm. does that, that ruin, does that kind of sour the relationship? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, I would, I would kind of be willing to say that Chengdu, they're, they're good signings. If they do sign them, I, I do worry that just from a coaching standpoint, um, if, if that's enough to kind of see them plump, like not plummet, but start to move down. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think they, from from everything that I've learned through talking to some of the people a little bit closer to the Chinese scene, um, he he seemed like a big, big important part in their success. So I, without him, do they make plans? I don't know. Um, so yeah, I think in general that's the the big story here is the the loss of a pretty influential coach. Mm -hmm. So I yeah. I do hope Coldest gets in though. I think he's very talented. Kami. I, I would like to see him in the Overwatch League. I just don't know how good he's going to be. Mm -hmm. So, Fair enough. Sorry Same we stuff. had to go through uh, some of the signings a little bit uh, more quickly than normal. Um, keep in mind mm. that we're obviously going to be doing kind of preseason rankings and going through team by team. Once things are still more solidified, even in the last week, yeah. we had uh, 24 different signings and rumors of signings. So it's still moving pretty fluid so we're we're trying to like touch on them bring them up we want you to feel like you're up to date but also at the same time you have to balance that with how much time can you actually spend uh hypothesizing on a rumor it's only a 90 minute show unless we get to our next patreon uh <laughs> our patreon goal 250 dollars. let's just do an extra show a month we'll make that whatever you guys want so patreon.com slash tactical crouch is where you can find that there yes guy i think we've got some new patrons this week 
We do. And thanks for the new patrons, Ryan P. And Chris Yu. Uh, for supporting the show. Um, Patreon.com slash Tactical Crouch. That's where you can subscribe if, if that's what it's called. Like, just like a little something, maybe. If you can afford it for the Christmas time. And um, yeah, thank you again. We once again at our $150 uh, dollar, like barrier thing, right? Yep. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no new five star iTunes reviews, but if you're like, hey, I don't want to sub on Twitch, I don't want to give on Patreon, or I can't, uh, go to iTunes, leave a five star review, and uh, mm. we will read your name in the next show and potentially part of your message if it's nice and cool and funny. So do that. We've got a little thing set up, so even if you're not in the U.S. of A, you should still um, should still pick it up. So, mm. uh, yeah. Um, individual shout outs for the week and where people can find you. Joe, what's going on, man? Uh, working, writing, um, should have a new letters to the future fan coming out soon. Um, just posted a fun video, uh, alternate overwatch history on my YouTube channel, which is Volmel. Um, all the social media that I'm on is always at Volmel. So I'd love it if you guys went and checked that video out. Um, I thought it was kind of fun, interesting. Um, yeah, kind of, kind of taking feedback on the, on the format. I, I think it's fun. I enjoy doing it. Um, but if you have any ideas, any topics we can explore, uh, let me know. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, kind of what's on the horizon. I'll probably do another one next week, um, about maybe a player that we talked about today. So I'll let you speculate on who that might be. Mm -hmm. Hotba. Nope. That's uh, hot <laughs> <laughs> and that's at Volamel everywhere. Yes. Volamel everywhere. V-O-L-A-M-E-L. Uh, just go, what about you, man? What's up? So I'll probably have good news in December. I guess I can say that I found a new place to ride for. Um, can I talk about anything else? That, so that's dope. Kind of saving up content for that. I have a couple of new ideas. One thing that occurred to me is like, I feel often very disconnected from the general um, people of the community and just like to, to see, you know, what, what kind of people they are and who I'm creating content for. It's basically like, who do I have in my mind when I'm writing, right? So I thought about maybe um, just once in a while, just streaming like a, a talk or discussion around in a specific topic with just about anyone who wants to join on a Discord channel and then cool. just talk, talk Overwatch, talk interests, you know, stuff like that. That's maybe a new format I'm eyeing that would also go up on YouTube then and on the uh, podcast pl platforms if it goes well. So we'll see. Sweet. I love that. Uh, as for me, you can find me everywhere at Kick Tripod. Um, I'm trying to stream a little bit more. Yiska now makes me want to play Apex again. I'm trying to play some uh, TFT. So uh, I don't know. You can find that. I'm trying to stream it a little bit more here. Twitch.tv slash Kick Tripod. Uh, other than that, though, uh, the show is primarily supported by our patrons and our subscribers. So subscribe, twitch.tv slash kick tripod. Support the show at patreon.com slash tactical crouch. Follow us on Twitter at tactical underscore crouch. We record next Tuesday with Brad Rajani, head coach for the Atlanta Reign. We'll see you all next time for episode 63. We'll be back for some post show right after this. Thank you.